Whether you're cutting commons, principles, or hip rafters, they all have tails, and they all need to be cut right, which means getting your calculations dead on. If you can manage that, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache down the road. Come on in, we're going to get into it. First things first, what's a tail? The tail of your rafter is the part of the rafter that sticks out past the wall, and it is going to hold the soffit, the subfascia, and the fascia and if there's any extra moldings that your designer wants to have on there. You never know. Either way, the calculations for this are going to be critical. The length of our tail begins at the end of the length of our rafter. And as you remember, the length of your rafter is flush with the outside of your frame. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's with this little notch or this space that we've got right here? That's super important because that space is to account for the sheathing that's gonna go on the outside of your wall. Now, it's important to remember to calculate or measure how wide the sheathing is that's being placed on there before you make this cut. Now, just like finding the length of your rafter, in order to find the length of your tail, you need two pieces of information, your run and your rise. Now, to start with, let's find our run. Now, you're not gonna to need to pull a tape measure in order to find this information out, you're going to need to look at your prints, or you might need to talk to your designer if they didn't include it. What it is, is going to be where they decided that the outside edge of your fascia is going to be from your wall. Perhaps it's like 12 inches or so. But once you have that number, you deduct the width of your fascia and the width of your subfascia, and then voila, you have your run. Next, we find our rise. In order to find our rise, we simply take the run that we just found, divide it by 12, and then we take that number and multiply it by our pitch. And that will equal our rise. Now say it with me. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Or, run squared plus rise squared equals the length of your tail squared. And then you find the square root of that. Now, you just take that measurement Add it to the length of your rafter, and you've got a complete common rafter that you've calculated all on your own. Congratulations. Now, that measurement you got is going to work for your hip jacks, your common rafters, and your principal rafters. But it's not going to work for the tail of your hip. So, in order to find the length of the tail of our hip, we need two pieces of information. Our A squared and our B squared. Our A squared is going to be the run of our common rafter tail squared plus the length of our common rafter tail squared. That will equal the length of our hip tail squared and then you find the square root of that. Now you've calculated the length of your hip tail and you simply add that to the measurement you got for your hip and you put those two together and you have a full hip. Now you might be asking yourself, what if the pitch of this side of the roof is different from the pitch of this side of the roof? Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. All you have to do is remember that you need to use the run of the tails on this side of your roof squared plus the length of your tails on this side of the roof squared, and that will equal the length of your hip tail squared, and then you find the square root of that, and then you just continue the process same as you did before. Now, for those of you asking, what about the valley tails? Well, those are the easiest ones to calculate of all, because valleys don't have tails. So, you're already done. And now you know how to calculate your tails with accuracy, which gives you a leg up on any job site, I guarantee it. But if some of it's just a little bit fuzzy, make sure you go back and refresh your memory. We have a whole series of videos on this, and make sure you like and subscribe, so together we can make knowledge common again.